Hi, I'm Sonia. Uh, my partner was Jimmy, and we have been here at Cove River for the past year with Mr. Dixon's AP Biology class, and we've been studying various elements of the local environment, like water quality, cloud cover, and invasive species, which was what our specific experiment was about. Uh, hey, I'm Jimmy. Um, let me just give you a little input on what um, invasive species are. Um, invasive species are species that are not normally native to other species environments. Uh, the harm of invasive species is that it can cause um, environmental health such, uh, to other species because they drive them out like by just completely taking over the land. Um, it can also cause harms to humans such as uh, destroying roads, buildings, um, even agriculture. Our procedure for this experiment was relatively simple since it focused mainly on qualitative observations while we did have some quantitative observations. We um, created 100 meter transects through the two different invasive species, which allowed us to use random sampling to get the most accurate information. By doing the transects, we were able to gather information from areas both where they were growing and where they were not growing. That way we had a better idea of how much of the plant was present in that area. Uh. We've been coming here for about a once every month, starting in September. Uh, so, like I said, I've been studying the Phragmites, and my partner has been studying the, the knotweed. Um, sometime through the, through the middle of the year, though, the DEP cut down the Phragmites, which was both a roadblock and an opportunity, because since the Phragmites were no longer growing near like the river areas, more, uh, more of the species started coming back, native plants started like living, living here. But it was also a roadblock, because since there was nothing to actually record, it didn't really give me much results. Starting near the, like around January is when I started having zero results, which was a good thing because like I said, they weren't going back, which means native species started growing and coming back. Um, since our experiment was conducted during the winter months, um, both plants were dormant during that time. And since our experiment ended during the early, early springtime, um, we weren't able to gain the data from when they were growing back because right now, as you'll see later in the video, you're going to see the Phragmites growing up to six feet tall again and the knotweed basically destroyed the path in which we used to walk on. Um, the Phragmites normally inhabit uh, freshwater areas such as like the Cove River as we're, you know, where we are. Um, as I said before, the DEP cut them down. As you see in the front, the Phragmites are torn down, um, destroyed. But then towards the back area, you would see them completely crushed. But in the center, however, they're starting to grow up, grow back at six feet tall. The reason the Phragmites keep regrowing back no matter what we do is because uh, of the rhizome that's hidden deep within the ground near the roots. Um, you can burn it, put herbicide in it, you can chop it down. But if, as long as the ry rhizome remains um, untouched and unharmed, it will always grow back. Like as you, like I also said, in, during the winter, they'll stop growing because obviously the upper parts can't survive due to the colder temperatures. But the rhizome doesn't get harmed, which causes it to regrow back. Here we're surrounded by Japanese knotweed, or Polygonum cuspidatum, which is what I studied. And um, you can see that they're here present in relatively mature forms and sprouts toward the ground. Now this plant was introduced to North America in the late 1800s as an ornamental plant. People planted it into their gardens to make them look pretty because um, in a few weeks they'll be blooming with little white flowers. And the problem with this plant is that it uh, spreads very quickly. And due to its height and width, it covers the ground. Any plants growing low to the ground can't get enough sunlight and then thus can't perform photosynthesis and can't survive. Now this plant is able to grow so much and is so hardy because of its root system. It has a large tuberous root that extends directly downward and then a web of smaller roots. And beneath the surface there are also rhizomes which are part of the stem system, not the root system. These rhizomes are what allow it to regenerate in the spring. So even if you cut down the top part of the plant, the rhizomes are still growing underneath the surface and they can progress underneath the ground and they can travel through water as well to spread the plant, which is why it can be found on both sides of Cove River, not just one.
In the coming year, we plan to continue our studies of the knotweed and the phragmites, and we also plan to contact the DEP and collaborate with them on both studies and eradication efforts. Uh, we would also like to give a special thanks to our mentors, uh, Mr. Dixon, our AP Bio teacher, and Dr. Graves for supplying us with the equipment that we needed and making all of this possible. Gracias. Pasiba. Thank, Thank you. you.